Hey, what's up, presenters? Rosie Julie here. Today, we're going to take a quick look at Mega Venusaur X. Effectively, it is a stage 1 Venusaur X. It has 230 hit points. The standard X rule, if it's not to hurt your opponent, takes two prizes. And it now has the Mega Evolution Clause. When you Mega Evolve Venusaur, your turn ends. It also has the attack Crisis Vine, which for 3 Grass and a Goalless does 20 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and paralyzed. It has a retreat cost of 4 and a weakness to fire. Now, I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet because I've tried to run this twice already, and when I went into detail, the episode basically became a rambling mess. I'm going to get the negatives out of the way first, the things I don't really like about it, and I'll try and explain why while being as brief as possible, and then I'll move on to what's good about him. First thing I don't like, 230 hit points. That is way too big. It's effectively a stage 1, why is it nearly twice as big as a stage 2 Pokemon? Why are stage 2s even a thing anymore if stage 1s are allowed 230 hit points? As you can see, it's a pretty petty argument, but I don't like that. It's it's huge. It's I can see being a problem, and I'll get to why it's a problem when I'm actually covering what's right about it, actually. The biggest thing I don't like about it personally is also probably what makes it most competitive, but we'll get to that very shortly. Another thing, the second thing I don't like about it, and... Once again, this is a personal thing, but I think it relates to its competitive outlook and what it can achieve. It's guaranteeing poison and paralysis. Now, we're already in a format where poison's a big thing right now. Verbank City Gym, on top of Crisis Vine, basically says take 150 damage. Not 120, 150. That, that's, that's pretty big. Add in that paralysis and your opponent has to have switch. They have to have escape rope. Or, to put it into a better context, instead of saying your opponent has to have them, you have to have switch. If you're against this, you have to have switch. You have to have escape rope. You could have the whole Keldeo floatstone thing going on. I would never put a Keldeo in front of this guy. Keldeo in front of Mega Venusaur X is just... It's asking to get mown down. He's, he's weak to it for a start. So he's going to be taking 270 if you leave him in the active position for too long. But that's what I think is like wrong about it. I personally think it's just too big and its attack, as heavy as the attack cost is, means that you personally need specific cards, you need specific answers in hand every turn. Because once it's set up, it's, it's set up. But now to what I'm not right about the card, and oddly enough, it does relate to its hit points and its attacks again. From a competitive standpoint on what could make this card good, those huge hit points and those extra effects on its attack basically are what make it look playable at the moment. When you look at Mega Venusaur on its own, it's okay. It's a lot of effort to set up, but once it's set up, it's going to do the damage before your opponent gets rid of it. Fire isn't a big thing right now because of Keldeo Blastoise, and Mega Venusaur would have to become a big part of the format for Fire to actually become a big threat to it. With that in mind though, that's just talking about Mega Venusaur on its own. Mega Venusaur most likely won't be on its own though. You find any kind of healing engine for Mega Venusaur X, and he is going to stick around. And we already have a great healing engine in format, in the form of Reuniclus. Your opponent puts a lot of damage on Mega Venusaur X. Okay, I'll have Reuniclus move it over to Revenge Pokemon. I mean, I have said before, damage manipulation isn't a thing in this form. Why? Oddly enough, because of Catcher. Catcher now has a coin toss on his become Pokemon reversal again. Meaning that now it's a case of they have to flip heads to get your Reuniclus. If you're on the way to setting up a second Reuniclus, it doesn't matter if you lose the first one. And I will be honest, it's like, I do think that the fact that you can have a huge healing engine for this Mega Venusaur, the potential to heal up to 160-170 damage off of it in one turn, I think that's pretty big. It becomes probably the biggest war we've ever seen. We then have to factor in the whole poison and paralysis thing, the whole big attack. I've already mentioned in this episode, Crisis Vine is 120, with Burbank it becomes 150 because of the poison. X Collection and Y Collection also receive the release of Muscle Band. Muscle Band is a generic 
dark form. You attach this to a Pokemon, it does 20 more damage. It doesn't have to be dark, it doesn't exclude axes, it doesn't exclude megas. It just gives your Pokemon an extra 20 attack power. So, with Muscle Band and Verbank, plus Guaranteed Poison, that's 170 hit points of damage from one attack. And I'll be honest, too, is there anyone who wouldn't think 170 in one turn is huge? 170 damage right now is its most competitive X's down in one. A lot of the X's in Plasma have around about 170 hit points. If you tell X and Xerneas X, but they both have 170 hit points. So that is basically a case of Mega Venus or X, one attack. Take two prizes. Sure, it's four edges set up the attack. You need something behind it to take the damage off that. It's basically it's the return of setup decks. It just sets up, it's going to upset people, and it's going to win. I can't see anything outside of luck consistently beating this deck. As I've said, if this thing is set up as at you and it's hitting you with this guaranteed paralysis, you're in a position where, as I said, you need switch. You need warp point. And as I said, that's both a bad thing and it's a good thing, depending on which side of the table you're sat on. If you're sat behind Mega Venus RX, then your opponent needing switch or needing escape rope, yeah, it's a good thing. If, if you sat opposite the Mega Venus RX, it's, it's horrible. I don't think anyone enjoys a game where they have to sit there and they need a specific card in hand every turn to actually basically play the game. With all that said, that's just my opinion on Mega Venus RX. A little bit more hate him, he's here and he has the potential to do some real damage. But what do you guys think? Am I completely misreading what this card can do? Am I actually assuming it's more than it really is? Or do you agree that with the right setup it could be a real problem? As always, let me know down below. And until next time, I'm Rata Joey. You guys are still the top percent. Peace out.